Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare, sometimes self-care, and today we're talking this or that skincare. Today I have a battle between two hydrating, replenishing serums with some big claims behind them. This is the Numbuzin Number no. 6 Deep Sleep Mask versus Toradin Dive In Serum. If you're so ready to find out which product is better for you, give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right in. Let's kick it off with the Numbuzin Number no. 6 Deep Sleep Mask Serum. Now I have to say, the name of this product has confused me for a while. Um, I was always confused by sleep mask in the name. I was like, it's a serum, but they're saying like it's a mask, like it's a sleeping mask, it's a sleeping mask serum. I don't really get it. There are some big claims around uh, this serum and it really does play into why Numbuzin named this the Deep Sleep Mask Serum. So they call this a like a sheet mask serum. So they are invoking like the hydration and the replenishment of a sheet mask. And even in the marketing, it says like, you know, I love how replenished and restored my skin feels when I do a sheet mask, but I just don't have the time to apply a sheet mask every single day. And so they claim that this serum is an answer to that um, to that issue, right? Um, the deep replenishment of a sheet mask without the time commitment. However, they do take it a step further with the claims around this mask and sleep because they do claim that this serum will restore your skin so much, just like um, a good night's sleep does. And they even say in the marketing, like even if you didn't get good enough sleep, just use this serum and your skin will look like it did, which I personally think is really cute you know, marketing, right? Um, it's intriguing, but it also does um, set you up for some really big benefits, some really um, big claims around this serum. So let's dive into the ingredients and see what this product can actually do for the skin. So there's a few notable ingredients here. We have five forms of hyaluronic acid, all at different molecular weights. And basically what that means is the hyaluronic acid is absorbing into the skin at different rates and dip different depths, right, to hydrate the skin. A little bit more meaningfully. They are also using 63% of glacial milk. That's the term that they use in the marketing. That is not anything that you're going to find on the ingredients list. There's no glacial milk. Um, what they are actually using is glacial water, and we see right at the top of the ingredients list, water, aqua, right? Um, 63%. Now, um, that actually means that a big portion of this product is water, and I know some people don't actually like that. Um, the glacial water that they're using it definitely has been a trend in K-Beauty and it's very much akin to thermal water, which we find very popular in French pharmacy products. And it's not complete bunk, right? Um, these waters do actually have vitamins and minerals, a very unique profile that is beneficial for the health of the skin microbiome and in turn, the strength of the skin moisture barrier. So it can actually be very beneficial, especially if you have very sensitive and reactive skin. I personally have found benefit from using thermal water Water, so I'm not here to completely like side eye it, right? Um, the the term, right, glacial milk is kind of interesting, um, but they have kind of um, filled up and bulked out the product, if you will, with water that has a little bit more to it than just your plain old standard water. There's some vitamins and minerals that should help your skin um, look and feel a lot more healthy. They're using one of my favorite humectants, which is a trio, actually, three ingredients that make up the uh, trio trade solution, which is called Aquasil. Now, this is a really interesting trio of ingredients. They are actually sugar molecules that help to bind hydration into the skin, but they don't just like hold hydration in. They don't just act as a humectant, but they also um, work to help your skin hold onto that hydration over time by strengthening the moisture barrier. Um, they can help with the synthesis of your skin's natural ceramides and proteins that help to hold everything in. Much in the same way, one of my other favorite humectants, panthenol, works a little bit harder, not just by hydrating the skin, but strengthening the skin barrier. And that's what helps your skin retain hydration. That's what fights dehydration, right? And so um, I love that they're not just rushing the skin with hydration.
hydration and just with the hyaluronic acid, but they are in their way working to maintain that skin barrier so that your skin can hold on to hydration longer. Oldies but goodies here, niacinamide, which can be barrier supportive, um, a little bit brightening as well. We do have panthenol and glycerin. So as I mentioned, panthenol is a, high, a humectant that also helps the skin barrier. And glycerin, we just know, is like uh, the most excellent skin hydrator. So when we look at the ingredients list with all these notable ingredients and really kind of take that in um, as a whole, we see that this is definitely a serum that is aiming to really replenish the skin with a lot of hydration, but also work to help your skin hold on to that and maybe even promote a little bit of that healthy glow, right, with all the vitamins and minerals and that little bit of niacinamide as well. So let's talk texture. It's very thin, it's very runny, it's very watery. I was surprised I was expecting something more gel-like, honestly, but the um, really watery uh, quality of this actually makes it feel very refreshing on the skin, very um, hydrating, light, very breathable. It's got good absorbency, um, and it does have like a nice, a nice hydration element to it. When it does dry, maybe a tiny bit of tack, and this is just me being very picky. This is not something that you're going to notice too much, especially if you're going in for your next skincare layers uh, pretty quickly while your skin is still damp. But if you did allow this to dry more on your skin, you might feel a little bit of tack. That that's definitely the hyaluronic acid at play, but it's not anything that should interfere with your other skincare layers, like the performance or the application of them. And it's not something you're gonna feel um, after you put anything on top. So being very, very picky, splitting hairs here, just the tiniest bit of tack, but overall a really nice, thin, lightweight texture. Now let's talk about Toradin Diamond Serum. The claims here in the marketing are pretty straightforward. They're not claiming anything too complicated or being too clever. Here. They're claiming that this is a serum that delivers deep hydration inside of the skin without a sticky finish. And they claim that it helps to build confidence. I thought that was funny when I was researching through this product that they uh, mentioned that in the marketing materials. But that aside, um, you know, that, that's really what Toradin is saying this product does. I will add on to that, though, that this product has been pretty viral, pretty popular for about three years at least at this point now. It is one of the best selling hydrating serums um, in K Beauty. It's definitely been number one at Olive Young quite a bit um, throughout the years. I think its popularity is starting to die down, but whenever something has had that much interest, that much um, conversation around that, that much hype, right? You know, if you've never tried it before and you're going to try it, it does actually build your expectation and anticipation about what the product can do for you. And so, since I'm kind of like talking about the different claims of the products, I thought it was worth mentioning that Toradin themselves are not really saying, like, hey, this is the very best, you know, number one seller, blah, blah, blah. But that is kind of some baggage, if you will, that comes along with a serum like this. Numbuzin is also a very popular brand. I think this is also worth mentioning before we move into the ingredients. Um, but I don't think that the number six serum is their most popular offering. Um, it doesn't get as much attention, but the brand itself has gotten an insane amount of hype. So I think actually both of these come with some of that baggage. And I think it's important for us to to recognize that, to see that and how it may influence us and our opinions about certain products and expectations, like I said, about the benefits. All right, that was a little bit of a sidebar, um, but I thought it was important to touch on. Let's go back to Toradin. Let's talk about this deep, hydrating, non-sticky um, you know, claims, and let's jump into the ingredients and see how they're gonna deliver on that. So a pretty similar point of view here to Numbuzin. We are using five different types of hyaluronic acid at different molecular weights. Remember, that's going to hydrate the skin at like different levels um, and, and deeper within the skin. Now, they're also using panthenol and beta-glucan. Now, as I mentioned, panthenol is a really good humectant. It really floods the skin with hydration, but it actually helps to support the lipids within skin, and that is what is crucial to your skin barrier and holding hydration in place. If you are suffering with dehydration, right, um, it's important to treat that symptom, that dryness, that dehydration, 
hydration tightness within the skin, but it's also crucial that you treat the source of the problem, which is often a deficient moisture barrier. So panthenol is actually a really great humectant to go towards better, in my opinion, than hyaluronic acid, because it does actually cover both of those things in one ingredient. Now they're also using beta glucan, which is a really great humectant ingredient in my opinion, something that actually helped me quite a bit when my uh, moisture barrier was very damaged and very weak and I was really trying to heal it up and get it back into a good spot. Beta glucan, you know, along with panthenol for sure, uh, was one of my favorite humectants. Um, it is just something that really seems to dive a little bit deeper. I didn't mean to do that, but you see what I did there. It does just seem to be one of those humectants that doesn't play at the top surface of the skin like hyaluronic acid can, right? Um, it actually just seems like it gets in there a little bit better. It's derived from plant sources like mushrooms and oats, um, and it just really fills your skin and floods it with a lot of juicy, plump hydration. And it can feel um, actually quite soothing as well. There's an anti-inflammatory benefit with beta-glucan. So along with panthenol, I think they're both really smart humectants. They're also using a soothing complex of ingredients, including elantoin, matacasic acid, and matacasicide. Elantoin is a really great soothing ingredient that promotes wound healing. Matacasic acid and matacasicide are the biologically active compounds found in centella, and they are the compounds most responsible for centella's soothing reputation, right? That calmness that you get with centella. These are the active compounds in the plant, and so you're getting a lot of great soothing, um, reduced reduction in inflammation, reducing redness on the skin, but they're also compounds that promote that healing um, of the skin as well. And, you know, the best candidate for these deeply hydrating serums are people who are suffering with dehydration, right? Your skin feels dry and tight deep within your skin. And sometimes with that feeling comes an itchiness, an irritation that these types of ingredients can actively work to calm and soothe and relieve the skin while also, um, you you know, with the rest of the formula working to hydrate the skin and ease those other symptoms of dehydration. And they have also included here in the ingredients, ceramide NP and cholesterol. Now these are really important lipids that make up um, a really big part of your skin barrier. And as I've already kind of covered, your skin barrier is what holds hydration in place. And it can be the source when your skin is dehydrated. It means that your moisture barrier is not performing the way it's supposed to. It is deficient. It is weak, it needs lipids. And so um, it's a really nice smart formula overall, especially um, for those folks who are suffering with dehydration. So the texture is a very loose, runny gel texture. It's not as watery as Numbuzin is. There is a fullness, there is um, a little bit more of a plumpness, a juiciness to this serum, but it actually still feels very light wearing, um, very breathable on the skin. There's there's no moisture, there's no heaviness to this, um, and I do believe it's still going to be appropriate for all skin types. But as you spread this across your skin, you get a burst of hydration that actually feels like it's getting into uh, the much deeper layers of your skin, and that's where it's bursting into hydration. This isn't something that sits towards the surface. It really dives in deep. I'm trying not to do it, I promise you, um, but there's really not too many other ways to describe that sensation of really getting down to what I say is like the source of the dehydration, deeper into the layers of the skin, bursting into hydration. And what's really interesting is it feels like it locks in place. Like the hydration gets down in there and it stays in there. It's not an occlusivity. It's not, as I mentioned, it's not a moisture. It's not a balance, but there's just something about it that really allows it to really replenish and relieve the skin with lots of hydration at a more meaningful level. Um, but really quick absorbency, not heavy, very breathable, very refreshing. Much like Numbuzin, you know, if you let this fully dry in your skin, you might feel just a tiny bit of tack, but quite honestly, that's me being very picky about both of these serums and really kind of testing them in an isolated way um, and really picking out every little nuance about the texture on my hands, right, without, um, in the absence of other skincare. But when I'm actually using this in a routine, I don't pick up on that stickiness at all because really, you know, I'm going in with my layers and letting them dry about 50% and then I'm topping it off with another layer to really take advantage of that moist skin, that damp skin that really accepts an, an 
absorb skincare even better. And so that in that way, in a, in a functional skincare routine, you will never feel the stickiness of either of these products, quite honestly. So this or that, I think it's pretty easy when you kind of just get introduced to these products to think that they're just hyaluronic acid focused, kind of boring, right, serums. I hope that in our deep dive of ingredients, you recognize, as I mentioned earlier, that they're a little bit more complex, sophisticated formulas of multiple different types of humectants way beyond the hyaluronic acid that can help to hydrate the skin. And I honestly think that both are formulated smartly. I really don't have any issues with any of the ingredients. I mean, with Numbuzin, I think that, like I said, beyond hyaluronic acid, because while I know some people really, really love it and it can be beneficial, I'm not against it, but I do find it kind of boring, quite honestly. Um, beyond the hyaluronic acid, I think they've been really smart, especially with the use of the Aquacil. You know, that trio of sugar binding molecules are so incredibly uh, hydrating and can really replenish dehydrated skin. I have used this complex in other skincare products and have been amazed by how uh, well they hydrate the skin. So it's a really smart addition, um, you know, beyond, like I said, the hyaluronic acid. I really don't have any issues with the ingredients here. They've done a, a good job. It's maybe not the most unique um, formulation out there, um, but I don't think that there's any problems here. Where my problems lie with this particular serum, it's the marketing, because let's revisit those claims. This serum has hyaluronic acid, panthenol, glycerin, the aquacil, niacinamide, and they're claiming that this can make your skin look like you slept eight hours when you didn't. They're claiming that this replenishes and restores your skin like a good night's rest. And I'm just not really sure how they are linking those two things up, right? I mean, everybody's gonna have a different point of view of what makes their skin look healthy and look refreshed, restored, and rested. And we all struggle with different skin concerns, right? Um, but I can just speak from being in my shoes personally, this does not make my skin look like I rested when I didn't. It just doesn't. It's just hyaluronic acid. It's just humectants. It's just panthenol. Um, it's just not really gonna be able to do that type of heavy lifting. I don't think we should ever rely on our skincare to do that. We need to be getting the sleep and taking care of ourselves. However, there are some ingredients that can give some nice wow types of benefits on the skin when you wake up in the morning. This ain't it. Okay, this is a nice hydrating serum. Those are some insane claims <laughs> that they're making. They're really stretching um, the possibilities of what this formula can do by claiming that it can do that. And so I obviously have a big problem with that because it's gonna be a big letdown if you buy into what they're saying. Now let's talk about the actual results because I do feel like this serum really under delivers, you know, not just on the, the claims about sleep, but I feel like maybe even a little bit in the hydration department. Um, it really felt nice, but it didn't really blow me away. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you're a new viewer, let's just do a quick recap um, on my skin and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I have combination skin. I do lean a little bit more dry, um, but I'm very prone to dehydration. And um, I have a very high bar for for what I'm gonna call very hydrating. So just know I'm extremely picky, but also know that I'm like the target uh, type of skin type for products like this that claim to, to deliver deep hydration. This felt like it delivered medium uh, hydration, if you will. It was definitely not just sitting at the top of the skin. There was definitely a nice hydrating effect to this, replenishing, cooling, refreshing, but it just didn't feel like it lasted with me. Um, it just didn't feel like it was working hard for my skin over time. Um, it was definitely something that, you know, by a couple of hours after doing my routine, I was starting to feel a little bit more dehydrated. And I have, you know, identified with my dehydrated skin for very uh, many years. So I know all about, you know, all the different layers and locking it in on occlusives. This definitely was not that. It's just, this can only do so much. And so for me, like I said, I think it delivers on a medium amount of, of hydration, but it was kind of underwhelming. Um, part of it at that I think is due to those big claims that they were making. And part of it is just because the hydration level of this is 
meh, it's not bad, but you know, it's not like mind blowing either. Now Toradin actually had a very similar point of view in the formulation to Numbuzin. You know, the five types of hyaluronic acid, the panthenol, the sugar molecules, right? Um, actually a lot of similarities are shared between these two products. However, I do feel like Toradin actually performs better in the hydration department. When I explained the textures, you probably caught on to that fact where the Toradin actually gets into the deeper layers and bursts into hydration, but also locks in place. And that was the key difference between these two products, the performance for me, and really my final um, feelings about how hydrating these actually are. Because Toradin really, the hydration really sticks with you throughout the day. It really gets deep into the skin, locks in place, stays in place, and really works hard to keep your skin hydrated. Where I feel like Numbuzin felt really hydrating at first, but then it's like the hydration power kind of fell off a little bit. Now, this could just be due to my skin chemistry, right? Everybody is different, but honestly, Toradin really outperformed in the hydration department. And I suspect, you know I'm biased because I am so fanatical about barrier care because it's what helped me so much in my skincare journey. And obviously it is the root of all healthy skin, right? If you have a deficient or weak damaged moisture barrier, nothing's really gonna be working out until you get that uh, taken care of. But because they have a little bit more of the barrier care built into the formulation with the ceramide NP, the cholesterol, um, you know, they are really focusing on the humectants that really help to um, fortify that skin barrier while still keeping things very light. I mean, this is not a heavy serum. Sometimes I think we hear ceramides, we think creamy, heavy. This is not that at all. It's a very light expression of that, but it's still barrier supportive. And that is exactly what you need. If it's not just plumping hydration you're looking for, but you're actually looking to solve dehydration, you want a formula like this. I mentioned this before, you can't just treat the symptoms, you have to get down to the source or you're just gonna get in this constant loop of hydrating your skin, feeling dehydrated and rehydrating and blah, blah, blah. You break that cycle, right? When you get to the source, which is your weak or deficient moisture barrier. This is maybe not the most barrier like building, um, barrier strengthening product out there, but it is helping. Um, and it is a product that is addressing the multiple symptoms. I think there's something nice about this with the matacastic acid and the elantoin as well. That soothing effect that just feels really comfortable and soothing on the skin. This or that. <laughs> pretty clear, right? Um, there was actually a very clear winner in the performance, obviously. It is Toradin. I think that this is the more replenishing, the more hydrating serum, and the one that is going to be most suitable if you are suffering with dehydration. If there's a this or that battle that you would like to see on my channel next, let me know in the comments below. And if this video helped you out and you haven't hit subscribe, come join our community. Hit subscribe, turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop. I do upload quite a bit here every single week on YouTube. Thanks for being here with me today. Thank you for making 34 episodes of This or That possible. I couldn't do it without you. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe. I'll see you in the next episode. Love you so much. Bye.